This is part of the magnetic motor I've been putting together for several weeks now. This type is called an imbalanced system. If you haven't seen my series on the three types of magnetic motors, you might want to check out the first in the series where I explain imbalanced systems in more detail. There are several motors out there that fall into the category of this type of magnetic motor force system. One of the most talked about is the Perendev magnetic motor which was built by Mike Brady. There have been numerous attempts at replicating his motor. None that I'm aware of actually work. And there is speculation that Brady's motor never did either. However, his design is rumored to be based on a patent held by another inventor. The inventor of this design mentioned that he had several conversations with someone on the phone that asked him a lot of technical questions about his motor design shortly before the parent of motor went public. So regardless of whether Mike Brady's motor ever worked, the principles behind it could be sound considering they came from a different inventor. I've always thought it would be fun to put one of these together and study it extensively myself to explore some of the theories of how some have speculated that it might work, point out some of the obvious mistakes I've noticed other people making in their attempted replications of the parent dev, and hopefully point people in the right direction toward building a working and balanced system based on this type of design. Since I now have a 3D printer, it's pretty easy to do so. If you'd like to take a look at what type of printer I use for this project and where to get one, I'll post a link in the description below. This is one of my earlier design ideas for this type of motor. The parts would all be adjustable and interchangeable. For this project I decided to keep it more simple, as I can always print more parts and alter my designs as I go along. 3D printing really opens doors up that would normally be shut unless you own a machine shop or are extraordinary at building things. I designed the rotors so that I could print as many as I like and stagger them, with the connectors that attach them all together along a shaft connected to two bearing assemblies. I printed two types of connectors, one to cap the rotor or rotors and the other to use as dividers between the rotors. Depending on how far apart I decide to stack the rotors, I can stack more of these in between or simply print thicker ones later. These parts, as well as the square aluminum tubing, are part of the leg assemblies that hold the rotor and shaft assembly together, as well as the aluminum tubes that the stator assembly will slide across. I made the circumference of the holes in the rotor and stator the size that will fit the magnets once they have shielding material around them, so I printed these parts in order to demonstrate the difference between trying to get the motor to work without shielding versus with shielding. The pegs are for holding the magnets in place in the rotor and stator. I ended up swapping out these bearings later on for bearings with far less friction. Most people have speculated that this type of motor would work with the proper magnet staggering method i.e. a golden ratio, which they try to achieve by staggering three rotors within three exactly aligned stators. The difference is the spacing. Some show the rotor lining up perfectly with the stator and using a staggering effect with the rotors to imbalance the pattern. Some show the pattern of imbalance already present in the stator, which would seem to make moot the idea of staggering the rotor. Robert Calloway presented a method that not only did this, but employed different orientations of the magnets than most of the other designs out there. There are numerous potential methods that can be tried and tested. The most important thing, and the thing that is most often overlooked, is proper magnetic shielding. I don't believe you'll get a system like this to work no matter how you build it without proper use of magnetic shielding. Also, because of the fact you're dealing with magnetic fields, you want to do everything you possibly can to not disrupt those fields in areas that could prevent or diminish the motor from working in its proper order. For example, screws that are in close proximity to the magnets could cause the device to fail. I used some metal parts in my design, but all of these are in the back ends of the magnets away from the parts where the stator and rotor fields directly interact. I plan on shielding the sides of the magnets that are near the metal parts in my final design regardless. I designed four types of stators, the pieces of which are all the same length, height, and width, so they're interchangeable. I did this so that I could test four magnetic spacing methods on the stators to determine which combination or combinations produce the best results. Then I'll simply print more of those or tweak the spacing for the final motor. One of the stators is set up to line up perfectly with the rotor, so it'll take three of them with three offset rotors to work properly. Two of the other rotors are spaced in a way that is commonly used in this type of design, and the fourth is something I haven't seen that I simply felt like trying. 
I'm going to test the rotor with each stator separately before I add any shielding material. Even using the weaker ferrite magnets that I'm using for the testing, this should demonstrate that the device will not work without shielding. Now I realize that I'm doing this with only one rotor rather than three, but if the spacing is correct, then this should produce some results once I add shielding material. I'll show you why that is shortly. I'm testing each stator assembly one by one, spinning the rotor in one direction and then the other, and even turning the rotor in the other orientation. This could be a bit of overkill, but I consider it due diligence to try as many combinations as possible when I'm testing an assembly like this before counting anything out. Just for fun, I repeated the test in attraction mode. The original Parendev motor design featured these metal shields attached to each magnet, which was supposedly to protect the magnets from the opposing fields from the stator magnets. I believe they may have held a dual purpose. One, they act as a ramp to attract the rotor magnets into the correct position with the stator magnets, and two, they shield the entry point. By using these shields on one side of the magnets, they are no longer repelled as they approach each other. So using several of them in unison would allow you to use attraction and repulsion in conjunction. The material that encases the magnets was supposedly composed of bismuth. Mike Brady also suggested pyrolytic graphite could be used in one of the attempted replications of his motor. According to Brady, this was done to focus the magnetic fields more tightly. This is due to the diamagnetic properties of bismuth and pyrolytic graphite. First of all, the material doesn't look anything like bismuth in the picture. This is a chunk of bismuth. The texture and color are completely different. Besides that, the diamagnetic properties of bismuth are very, very weak. This chunk is over an inch thick and it can't block the magnetic field of a ferrite magnet that is slightly smaller than the size used in the original Parendev design. It certainly can't block the field of these neodymium magnets, which are also slightly smaller than the neodymium magnets used in the original Parendev design. Nor will several layers of pyrolytic graphite. What the material looks like to me is possibly ferrite. This would be a good material to use to block and redirect the fields of the neodymium magnets. Combine that with the metal shielding and you have a much better chance of getting your motor to work. I should also mention that some designs I've seen featured magnets that have been shaved at an angle to redirect the field at an angle. This is not a bad idea, though it requires a bit more tooling or having some magnets specially made. The next step in the testing process will be to add shielding to each individual magnet and test each stator against the rotor. That will give me a better idea how many rotors and which stators to use in the final design. If people have the interest, I'll keep posting the results to each step of the testing. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and do great things.